Hey, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to talk a little bit more about difference of squares, kind of looking at the challenging types of questions you might get with the difference of squares. Um, so we're going to be factoring difference of squares today. That's our objective for this lesson. Let's go ahead and get started. Quick recap on factoring of, of perfect squares or solving the difference of squares. If you have a perfect square minus another perfect square, you take the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term, and you multiply that times the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. And that's how we would factor a difference of squares. Now, think back to a different time. A time long past, well, not that quite a long past. Just the last lesson. Here's what we had for our equation. Remember, this is exactly what we said before. You have a perfect square minus a perfect square. Square root of the first plus the square root of the second. Square root of the first minus the square root of the second. So we're going to take that to a, a slightly different level today as we try some a little bit more challenging questions. But before that, we'll just do one more that's just, again, just a little bit more challenging because in this one we have a coefficient and an exponent and an exponent over there. But both are perfect squares. 9x squared, if you take the square root of 9x squared, you get 3x. And we're going to take the square root of y squared, which will give us y. And then we'll do, again, the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. So we're going to continue this pattern. All right? OK. How about this one? Go ahead and give it a shot. Take the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term, square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. All right. Did you get? this one for your answer, 7x plus 9y, 7x minus 9y. All right. If you did, then you're in good shape, and you're getting going towards what we need to be doing. All right. I'm going to do a couple more here. Again, you can pause the recording and see if you can solve these ones, then come back to the recording and see what I write down for the answers. All righty. We take the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term, square root of the first term, minus the square root of the second term. That's it. Let's do it again. Square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term, square root of the first term, minus the square root of the second term. And that's how it's done. Volunteers, please, again, pause the recording. Take a look at it. See if you can solve these ones before I go ahead and do them. All righty. So we've got the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of a squared is a. The square root of 1 is 1. And then we take those same numbers, the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. And do so it again. Square root of 25x squared is 5x plus the square root of 16. And then the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. Again, these are going to do the same exact thing. We're going to be repeating over and over and over. But with this type of question, you'll notice that we get a little bit more practice. Let's go ahead and solve this one first. The square root of the first term is 9x squared. The square root of the second term is 4. See that? Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of x to the power of 4 is x squared. So we'll do that again. Square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. And the difference with this question is that when you look at this, we're not done yet, are we? We have a perfect square minus a perfect square again. So we have to take this one step farther. So the 9x squared plus 4 remains the same. This is not a difference of squares. It's the sum of squares. We're adding them. So that doesn't change at all. It's the second one that we deal with. We have to take the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term, square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. Now let's take a look again. Is this a perfect square minus a perfect square? 
No, it's not. So this would be our final answer as a completely factored solution. All right? That would be our final solution. So with these types of questions, what we're going to do is the second set of parentheses that we have there, the second binomial, we're going to be factoring those. So let's go ahead and take a look. We've got two questions up here. Go ahead and give them a try. Pause the recording. See what you get. And then I'll go ahead and show you the answers. All righty. Hopefully you noticed that the square root of 16a to the power of 4 would be 4a squared. The square root of 625 is 25. So we take the square root of the first plus the square root of the second. Then we're going to take the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. Now, noticing I'm running out of space here, but this second term is, again, a perfect square minus a perfect square. So everything else will remain the same, and I'm going to try and write it as small as possible here to try and give myself enough space. But I'm going to take the square root of the first term, 4a squared, which will give me 2a, plus the square root of the second term. Then I'm going to take the square root of the first term again, minus the square root of the second term. My final answer, these are not, is not a perfect square minus a perfect square, so I'm done, and that would be the final solution. Did you get that one when you did it? I hope so. Let's take a look at this next one. Um, x to the power of 4, the square root of x to the power of 4 is x to the power of 2, plus 1, x to the power of 2, minus 1. And again, with this, our second um, binomial is a perfect square minus a perfect square, so we're going to have to factor that one step farther. x plus 1, x minus 1. All right? And that will give us our final answer. So two more, just so that we can make sure we've gotten a, you know, a handle on this. Let's go ahead, a to the power of 4 minus 16. And you'll notice with these ones that there aren't a whole lot of terms we can really work with, so you're going to see the same numbers repeated often with these. All right, let's take a look. a squared plus 4, a squared minus 4. And then we can factor that farther. a squared plus 4 remains the same. And we have a plus 2, a minus 2. Again, just taking the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second, square root of the first term minus the square root of the second. Let's take a look at this one. 64 is a perfect square. It's 8 times 8. So 8x squared plus 1, and then 8x squared minus 1. Now I threw this one in, hoping that maybe I would catch someone on this, because we've done so many where we can factor the second one, we have to be very careful that if this is not a perfect square, we can't factor it any further than that. 8 is not a perfect square, so we can't factor, take the square root of 8x squared and get a nice even number. So that would be the final answer for this one. That's why I said be a little bit careful with this one, because it kind of helps us to keep on our toes. All right, now it's time to race. Don't pause the recording. We're going to race on this one. I'm going to solve x to the power of 16 minus 1, and you're going to solve it. We're going to see who solves it quicker. Ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, amazing. I'm just, I'm just fast. That's all there is to it. So basically, here's what I did. I took the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second, square root of the first term minus the square root of the second. And then I had a perfect square minus a perfect square, so I factored it further. R the ones with the pluses, you can't do anything with. It's always the one on the end, the negative one, that you can factor a little bit farther, and then a little bit farther, until we get down to this. It's just repeating the same process over and over. Square root of x to the power of 8 was x to the power of 4. Square root of x to the power of 4 is x squared. Square root of x squared is x. So now I finally get down to the bottom here, where I no longer have a perfect square minus a perfect square, and that one would be my final answer. All right? Sorry I cheated in our little race. Okay, one more question for you. Go ahead and solve this one. See how you do 
solving this. All right. Again, we take the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term, square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. Lots of repetition in this lesson. x squared plus 9, and then I'm going to factor the second binomial, square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term, square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term, and that's it. All right, so our final correct answer would be um, this one, D. Look at that, I tried to fool you with C, I guess, there, having two negatives. But D would be the correct answer. I hope that you were able to get that one. And I hope, I know I talked really fast so I could show lots and lots of examples of this. I and mean, once you see a lot of examples, I think you'll get really quick at it. So I hope this lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.